Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up as we today look at the highest rated games in terms of our review scores for last month, the month of November. A big thank you to Playtonic for sponsoring this video. As I mentioned, we'll be looking at the scores for the games we reviewed, there were 8 in total, ranking them from the lowest score up until of course the highest. For a game to be on here, we have to have reviewed it, of course, that goes without saying. So with that in mind, which game was our top rated for the month of November? Well, let's find out. So kicking us off then in 8th place for the month we had Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The newly released 9th generation of Pokemon games did so much right in some respects, the open world nature and the freedom that affords the player is a great step forward for the series and it really should have been the basis for this game being an unequivocal critical success. But unfortunately the negatives really do drag the experience down. Constant popping, low resolution textures, inconsistent animations and a frame rate that can plummet dramatically at times give the impression of a game that was rushed out, quite possibly for Christmas. It's such a shame and almost makes this both the best and worst Pokemon game ever and it got a switch up score unfortunately of 63%. The sponsor of this episode is Lil Gator Game, which releases on the 14th of December, published by Playtonic Friends and developed by Mega Wobble, who are offering a 30% pre-order discount. It's a beautiful 60 frames per second adventure title that encapsulates that feeling of being a child and just playing in the environment. It takes the threat out of the adventure but still keeps the actual enjoyment. You can slide around on your shield, drift by using an old t-shirt as a parachute, and you're joined by a group of friends who are trying to help help you to entice your now older sister back into playing games with you. You'll even work together to make an awesome fortress out of an old playground. There's a simplified crafting system, loads of hidden areas and items as well as challenges to take part in and it's one of those experiences that has a beautiful soundtrack and is so easy to pick up and play. Truly a charming experience and one not to miss out on. Thanks to Platonic Friends for sponsoring this episode. In 7th place for the month we had Harvest Stellar. This is Square Enix's latest ARPG and farming hybrid and whilst it is a game that will most certainly resonate with many people due to its fun and nuanced combat and that addictive farming gameplay, the balance between the two is perhaps not quite as it should be. Combat can come to a standstill if you have not used the farming side well enough and whilst we fully appreciate that this aspect will appeal massively to some gamers, we felt other such games bridged this balance in a less intrusive way which allowed the player to proceed as they wanted. Still a lot of fun to be had here, just a little flawed in some key areas, it got 69%. In 6th place for the month was Aragami 2. This stealth adventure game sees you taking on a number of missions set over 10 different locations, generally related to assassinating particular targets, and the stealth aspects of the game will most certainly appeal strongly to fans of that particular gameplay style. Things may get a tad repetitive for some, a few more locations would have helped with this, and it's also a little expensive, but still certainly worth playing, and the included online mode is also a great addition. It scored 73%. Coming in at 5th place was Ghost Song, this metroidvania has a fantastically atmospheric feel to it aided by the great music and moody visuals. Combat is also a strong point to the game and it hits all the metroidvania notes very well, shifting between a slower more explorative pace to an all action feel when you encounter bosses. There are a few rough edges and the jump perhaps airs more on the floaty side but a solid title and it scored a switch up score of 83%. In 4th place was Signalis, this is a survival horror game with a cyberpunk setting, harkening back to classics of the genre such as Resident Evil or Silent Hill, but it also had quite a strong Metal Gear Solid vibe to it in terms of the layout and some of its set pieces. 
it did a good job of updating some of the old tropes of the survival horror genre, whilst perhaps still leaving in a few that could have done with some refinement, but it's still a great love letter to the genre and a very good game in its own right, and it got a switch up score of 87%. Moving into the top three now, and in third place was Sifu. This is a fantastic action game based around a man looking for revenge for the death of his family and focuses on the use of martial arts to take on a large number of enemies at once. Button mashing will not get you very far here and mastering blocking, dodging and countering is the only way you will make significant progress as every time you die, years are added onto your life, making you stronger but reducing your life bar. It's a very impressive port and Mark found the game to run very well during his playthrough and the whole thing just has a cinematic feel to it, making it feel like a very unique experience in some ways. It scored 88%. In second place for November was Bayonetta 3. The third instalment of the action series featuring the titular Umbra Witch brought all of the style and fast-paced combat the series is known for, whilst introducing new demon slaves which could assist you in battle or can be used occasionally to solve minor puzzles within the levels themselves. It aimed for 60 frames per second and whilst hitting it at times, it did seem to creep down into the 50s more often than not, albeit then steady in itself at a fairly consistent rate when this happened. The chapters were over the top and combat was a great deal of fun, and whilst the story was nonsensical and there was perhaps a little too much style over substance early on, it's still a huge amount of fun to play. It got a switch up score of 89%. And in first place for the month, we had Tactics Ogre Reborn. Now this is a remaster of a 2010 PSP game, which itself was a remake of a 1995 game on the Super Famicom, and it's a classic tactical RPG with a deep and well-told story and fantastic strategic combat. Performance is also very good, and the tweaks made to the gameplay, particularly in terms of how random battles are handled, are definitely positive ones, and they keep the game feeling modern, especially with some very strong competition in this particular field. The quick retry option was very odd, basically landing you at a spot in the battle where you could be instantly re-killed, but on the whole, a fantastic rebirth of a classic game, and it scored a month high switch up score of 93%. So there you have it, another month of Switch Up reviews. Did you pick any of these games up? What did you think of them? What would you have scored them as? Please do let us know in the comment section below. A big thank you to Playtonic for sponsoring this video with their upcoming release, Little Gator Game. Information and relevant links will be in the top pinned comment and the description of this video. Don't forget, if you are looking to get yourself any eShop cards, you can do so via our website, switchup.gg, and you can save yourself 10% off of the price if you use the code SWITCHUP if you are in the EU or US regions. There's also a link down there to Play Asia if you are looking to import any games. Again, use the link down below and use the code STATED, and you can get yourself 5% off of an order from there. A quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.